Hello, Anikod here, and in today's video, I'll be taking you through the modular cars in Rust. They've been updated since my last video, so let's go for round two and see what I can show you. If you look in the description below, I've timestamped the video, so if there's something you want to see, click on the timestamp and it'll take you there. Cars are good if you want to be anything from a race car driver to a taxi driver, to a lorry boy, to a water hoarder, it's up to you. They're pretty fun when you know how to use them and what parts to look out for. In Rust, you'll find a few broken down cars laying around in the world most of them have seen better days but all you're looking for is the chassis they come in three variants and this is the most important part because this is going to be the bitty bitty baseline for your build you'll find a two module one that can fit well two modules a three module one and a four module one which is the biggest chassis currently in rust if you're lucky enough to find one with a working engine you can drive this back to your base with a bit of low grade fuel and a handful of components but if not you'll need to push it back let's hope you don't live too far away or you'll probably get robbed or hit by a rock if you're pushing it along a beach once you've dodged the rock folk you'll want to start working on your pride and joy and for this you're going to need a modular car lift to get the car onto the foundation you can now make an actual car ramp once you have an easy way to get the car onto the ramp you're going to need five power to get it to work and if you're wondering where to get one of these ramps from you can get them from the usual locked crates around the map if you've got 150 scrap burning a hole in your pocket you can swing by the bandit camp for one so now you've got a ramp a vehicle of sorts and power what's next well in order for you to get your engine to work there's a few components that you need they come in three variants low quality medium quality and high quality there's then five parts you'll need to make sure you have the carburetor the crankshaft pistons spark plugs and the valves if any of these are missing the engine won't start all you have to do is put them in by opening up the engine compartment it doesn't matter if you've got standalone engines or the modules with the engines built in you put the parts in exactly the same so once you open it up you'll see a picture and it literally shows you where each component goes and how many components you need of each or you can just right click the component and it lets you auto drop it into the correct place so what's the difference with a components quality well this is what's going to get you your acceleration your top speed and your fuel economy all low quality parts are 70%, medium quality parts are 85% and the high quality parts are 100%. Carburetor will cover top speed and fuel economy, crankshaft will cover top speed, pistons will cover top speed and acceleration and the spark plugs will give you acceleration. Finally the valves will improve fuel economy. So the only thing left is the modules. I like to split these into three parts, cockpits, the middle modules, and then the specialist modules. You can get different modules for lots of different things. They cover storage capacity, the types of storage, armor ratings, number of cronies you can get, even the acceleration and speed if you want those quick getaways. You will notice some little white dots in the modules. This tells you how many spaces the module takes up on your chassis. You can get armoured cockpit, that's going to get you 700 hit points. A standard cockpit module will give you 360 hit points. You can get a cockpit with an engine built in which gives you 425. The engine on this is pretty basic and it will give you 70 kilowatts of power. Specialist modules include a dedicated engine slot, more powerful than the base engine at 95 kilowatts. A flatbed single storage module, you can get a double flatbed storage module a fuel tanker module that stores a huge 200,000 millilitres and even a dedicated storage module that holds 18 slots perfect for you raiders out there hoarding all that stuff you don't really need these can be stacked too if you really need to the middle modules are generally just the ones that hold people you know the commodity that just doesn't matter in rust you can get these in taxi form although no one really uses the taxis in rust you can get the standard passenger which holds two people a minibus sort of section that holds six people and so on once you've put your car together the ramp will only lower if you have the correct modules in place as a minimum you'll need an engine and a cockpit the rest is optional if you have these then the ramp will go down and let you drive it away don't forget to put the fuel in the back. Yeah, don't forget about fuel. You can't get Teslas yet, so you're gonna to have to use low grade. 
Now, once you've built your pride and joy, you're gonna need to think about security as well. You can easily make keys for these cars. Once they're on the ramp, you'll see the option to craft a key. It'll add to your inventory. However, this does mean if you get killed, you can get the key robbed from you and people can steal your car. There is a positive to this. If a car's got less than 20 health, you can drive the car with or without a key. Failing this, you can just push the car back to a ramp and remove the lock from the control panel. So now you've got your module car, your ramp, your engine components, your choice of modules, now what? Well, this is up to you. You can pretty much build a car for any job in Rust. Have a play around with it, see what works best for you. I can't tell you what the best is. I can tell you what the fastest is because you're looking at it right now. But apart from that, just have a mess around and have fun with it. Well, I really appreciate you watching the video. If you have watched this far, let me know you're a legend in the comments down below. If there is something you want to see, feel free to let me know in the comments as well. You can catch me on social media if you want to see what I'm up to and what I'm working on. If you have learned something new, feel free to give me a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you enable the bell notification, you will be notified of any future videos as well. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.